everybody. This is attorney Arkady Freckman, a New York City personal injury trial attorney. And today I'm coming you to you from my office in Brooklyn. And I am actually about to do a trial improv class. It's an improvisation where we practice our improv skills, meaning you never know what's going to happen in trial. Somebody might come in with a surprise witness or they might give testimony that you're not expecting. And so it's about rolling with the punches. It's about being malleable and adapting to different scenarios, different situations. And it's pretty cool. Like we had our first class last week and we're doing one in about 10 minutes. They happen out in, through Zoom, through video calls, but they happen out in California. So in New York, it's 8 p.m. So it's a little late, but it's, it's worth it. It's it, it been pretty cool. I met the teacher at Big Sky, Montana when I went there for a trial by human uh, workshop and we were there for an entire week working on our jury selection skills direct examination cross-examination closing arguments and so that's kind of like what i wanted to talk about today i wanted to talk about obtaining compensation for non-economic damages and really all damages but it's kind of like a broad broad category somebody asked a question this week can I obtain more than my medical bills? How do I know how much I am going to obtain in my case? And so it really depends on the jury instructions in your state, in your jurisdiction. Here in New York, our jury instructions allow for economic damages, meaning lost salary, medical expenses, and that goes for past as well as future. And then they also allow for non-economic damages. And it's just really, Words like what will justly and fairly compensate the plaintiff and for their pain, any injury, any disability. And if that injury is permanent, then also for the future. And the future is determined by life expectancy tables. So for example, somebody who's in their early 20s, you look it up in the book and they may live for 50.2 years. And so that's how much longer the uh, compensation, the monetary amount is supposed to compensate that individual. So uh, it's interesting because when you pick a jury, you really want to talk about money and you want to talk about the fact that in civil justice, money is the only remedy, right? There's no such thing as an eye for an eye. Um, no one's going to take away a doctor's license for committing medical malpractice. No one's gonna take away someone's driver's license for crashing or rear-ending you. The only remedy is monetary. And so that is civil justice in our society. And so you have to be willing to be brutally honest, to be vulnerable, and to speak to jurors to make sure that you get people on your panel who are okay with allowing for money. And notice I didn't use the word awarding, right? Because an award is kind of like a prize. You're awarding money. I don't like that word. I don't know. It's in, it's in our jury instructions, unfortunately. I think it should be taken out. But it's in a lot of the jury instructions, an award of money. An award is like you're winning a prize, right? And that kind of plays into the whole tort reform, defense lawyer, insurance company, um, you know, spin that they put on it, which is like a misinformation campaign. That kind of says, well, it's just a lawsuit lottery. People are faking their injuries. They want to make money. It's not really about that. It's more about the harms and the losses and the true value of what was taken and what is that worth. And the way one lawyer described it is he said, it's kind of like, he used the metaphor of diamonds. It's kind of like if you had, let's say, a bag of diamonds and these diamonds are what you have, that's all you have. Let's say you're like a vagabond traveler and you're, all you have are your clothes and, and one knapsack and the diamonds in that knapsack are all you have. And somebody takes that knapsack with those diamonds and throws them in the river and they're gone forever. What would that be worth to you? Well, that would be worth everything, right? That would be worth millions upon millions of dollars because that's what those diamonds were worth. And in the same way, we have the diamonds in our life. We have the things that we enjoy doing. Maybe some people enjoy their hobbies, their family, their children, playing with their children, um, playing sports, you know, reading to their children, studying with their children. They enjoy uh, just their, their, their uh, loved one, 
whether it's their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their wife, their significant others, they enjoy walking on the beach. One of the questions I ask in jury selection is, if this was a perfect day and you could be anywhere with anyone, where would you be and who would you be with? And then the jurors start talking. A lot of people say, I'd be with my family or I'd be with my, my boyfriend, my husband, and I would go to Hawaii, the beach, the ocean. I would be near the water. It's very calming and meditative, right? And why do we ask that? We ask that because later they're going to hear about what the plaintiff, the personal injured, uh, the injury victim cannot do. And they can't do certain things, right? The diamonds in their life were taken away. And in the same way, what is that worth? Because it's going to be everyone's job to put a number on it. That's going to be the job of the jurors. And we have to tell them that up front. Can they do that? Should they do that? Because we're looking for six people and two alternates. We're looking for that jury in New York that is going to be able to do that. And one of the other analogies you could draw is the idea of an appraiser. Because I was thinking about it, I was actually preparing, I was supposed to be on trial today out in Staten Island, so I was preparing this case. And I was looking at the case and I noticed that it was actually a very simple case. It was a Geico uh, insurance, 100,000 policy, very simple case, so, you know, injury, there was a, a surgery to the wrist, arthroscopic, he's all better now. He has some residuals, also a herniated disc, soft tissue, no surgery for the herniation. But anyway, but the point was that there was a very elaborate uh, report and his car was appraised because the defendant uh, hit my client right in the in the intersection and the defendant's car had a lot of property damage it was like eleven thousand dollars worth of property damage and it was appraised and in the appraisal they had all these details right they had like for example well, the, the whole front bumper was destroyed and the fender and then the coolant and then the the air conditioning liquid was leaking and then this and that and they had all these parts and the and the labor and it was like, I don't know, it was like 30 pages and they had all the photos of what was wrong. They had like 50 photos in there. It was very detailed. And I thought, well, that's an interesting parallel because that's kind of like what the jury has to do, right? They have to look at all the harms and all the losses. They have to appraise the value, but they have to do it for the human being, the damages to the human being. And they have to do it without, you know, factoring in their personal beliefs. Because if they have the belief that all these cases are like a lawsuit lottery, well, then they have to be able to set that aside. Because that appraiser who was appraising the car, he just looks at it, right? And he, he says, well, this is going to be worth $15,000 based on market value, based on what it's worth. And in the same way, if you're appraising the value of someone's life, right, what they can no longer do, what is that worth? What is their pain worth? What is their suffering worth? What is their mental anguish worth? All of the things that are allowable, their loss of enjoyment of life, the daily tasks, having fun, the pleasures of life. That's why we asked the question about the perfect day. And so we, you know, you, you talk about each one and then you add it all up. And then in closing argument, you tell them, you don't ask because asking is like, oh, can you please give me a million dollars? No, they're going to say no. You know, you say civil justice is a million dollars in this case. And you have to be, you know, back it up with your evidence, with your proof, with your medical records. And then at that point, they've heard it throughout the entire trial. So you have all your evidence. So you don't ask, you tell. But I really like that analogy of the appraiser. And there's actually a new book out uh, called Damages. Um, and it talks about, it's a very, very big book. I think it's like 500 pages, all about damages, all about asking for money or, or actually telling, you know, obtaining money in, in personal injury cases, civil justice. And I want to talk about that, maybe this idea of an appraiser and all of the parallels and all of the subcategories of how it really fits and it makes sense in a personal injury context. Maybe I'll do that in another video. Okay, everyone, have a great day. Let me know what you think. Um, let us know if you have any questions about your case or about um, civil justice in general. Okay, have a great day, and we are here for you. Bye-bye.